It was 1942 and the threat of war was very real to Durban. And being nine years of age, when we were all off the Nottingham Road by train, we were completely oblivious to the situation with war. And it was only in late life um, that you discovered the reasons for these moves to being further inland. And we were very fortunate to go to Spring Grove Farm of Colonel Green's in Nottingham Road. When you look back, it was fun. It was, it was a new experience and it was just fun. We caught the train from Durban Station in our little khaki shorts. And anyway, we got on the train, got up to Nottingham Road, and uh, were amazed to find the whole place covered in snow. And we came across this big stone house at the end of quite a long driveway, and uh, that was where we were going to have our school. We didn't have classrooms, so we had our classes out in the open air. You know, standard one would be under that tree, and standard two would be over there. I mean, it was, it was very intimate teaching, you know, it was, it was great. When the war ended, significant changes had been made to the, to the property to accommodate the school, and an agreement was reached with my great-grandfather, uh, Colonel Green, to sell the property to the school. So the move from Clifton in Durban to Clifton and Nottingham Road um, really has been most fortuitous for the school. We've ended up in a fantastic area um, of, of farmlands. Um, we're in the KZN in Midlands, um, in the foothills of the Drakensberg, and it's the ideal place really for a school to be, for children to be, and for teachers to be. Uh, Kenneth Howarth came with the school to Nottingham Road in the new venture. And in Durban to take his place was Tim Sutcliffe. The teaching was excellent. There were a couple of, of really good staff. The standard of teaching, or the level they got us to when we left Clifton, was perfectly okay to go to Hilton in my class and these other schools. The quality of integrity and, and just plain decency, playing the game properly and doing it well, were ingrained in us. And, and I think we were so fortunate um, to have that. It made you a rounded person in that it showed you more or less what actually went on in life uh, with being on a virtually an old farm, you see. So from that point of view it was very valuable. So once the war had ended the decision was made to make Clifton a real school. Um, classrooms were built, starting off with the Wattle and Daub arrangements, which are now the, the reception and the admissions offices. Classrooms were built properly from the, mid, from the 50s right through to 1960, and along with that came the boys' house in the 50s. A great deal of the old was brought into play together with the new, and it seemed to me that that uh, little bit of paradise, that educational paradise, was being taken advantage of in its best possible um, op opportunities and offerings. So as a pupil at Clifton, I really enjoy it, um, especially the family feeling, the love that's around. And when I first came here, I wasn't all sure about the environment because um, half of my life I was in the city. I just couldn't believe there were so many trees and you could actually climb the trees. What a privilege it is to be a headmaster of Clifton Notties, as it's affectionately known. Um, I was a former parent here as well once upon a time and remember driving through the gates and seeing the sign that said beware free range children and for me that encapsulates exactly what Clifton is about. Um, it is about children being children. Um, it's about children being safe and I think if one looks at the original reason why we, why Clifton left um, 75 years ago and the children left Durban, it is exactly about being safe. Clifton was originally only a boys' school, but in 1987 they took the decision to introduce girls. In the 1990s saw the building of the, of the girls' house, now known as the palace by some of the boys, a massive upgrade from what had been the cottage, and which was originally a tractor shed. 
The chapel came along in the 90s um, and the junior primary has grown from strength to strength from 1994, I think, right the way through to today. And it's really, we're very proud of our junior primary. We like uh, the trampolines and also there's nice leaves and we pick them up. And, and we play sports here. Yeah. yeah, and we also like the acorns. We have a nice, nice school with all nice friends. Yeah. Our school has never had fences and that in itself uh, reads to the ethos where children are, are simply free to learn, to discover uh, in our beautiful environment. Our pride and joy these days, of course, is our, in, is our indoor centre, um, which houses a wide array of, of activities, tennis, cricket, squash. It is such a lovely environment and the children are nature-loving, earthy and they have a nitty grittiness about them. They can be faced with any situation and will know how to make it. And so our ultimate aim is to send our children at the end of grade seven into high school. Children in a good space, children who are independent, children who are capable, children who are curious. And then our aim is realized that this is ultimately the ideal place to grow children. I'm scared to leave this family because it's so beautiful here. It's just really special.